Athena Swan is part of a wider conversation about equity within our institution. We're going to take a very targeted approach where we have line of sight of a potential deficit in our practice or our process and then an action plan to resolve that. The first bit is a conversation, please. How would you like to see this programme flow out across the university? And what do you think as a community would be the most important benefits that we can gain from being involved in this process? I think that this is vitally important. We should be a model organisation for championing the needs of diverse populations. So as a research-led university, as a university that has a rich learning and teaching environment, it's, it's really important for us to get this right. Science really works best in a team environment. And the best teams are ones that are the most diverse teams. Because from that you get the creativity that underpins science. You also get the dialogue which ensures excellence. Hopefully this is the snowball effect that we need in science. A diverse committee, a diverse research team is an effective team. If we ignore a large chunk of our population, we're ignoring a wealth of opportunities. Everybody brings to the table different approaches depending on their background. Male, female, young, old, they all bring a different way of looking at a problem. I think for individuals, being able to maximise your potential is important. Any obstacles to that are a problem. I do think it's everyone's issue and I think that disciplines of any kind benefit from having a diverse range of people involved. But also we need to think about disciplines in which there are predominance of women. You can also get that pyramid effect happening. In some disciplines, they will argue that they have addressed gender inequity and the evidence that they give is the number of women that now enter into the profession. What they don't give you is further evidence of how many of those women assume the top roles in that profession. So we have a long way to go. What we're doing is trying to put it into the agenda in a continuous basis. And what we're hoping to do is raise the awareness so it's not just something that we pass off to a committee to look at, but it's actually enshrined in what everyone is thinking about. It provides a forum for very, very different opinions to be raised and certainly it's led to a set of very rich and diverse set of arguments and positions that are, that are brought to the table when we have conversations. I think it's a wonderful initiative and very keen to see it rolled out. It's quite clear that as far as leadership roles in academia, uh, the system is not attractive to women at a very fundamental level. Men have, by way of the system, had a privileged position without recognising that they've had that privileged position, there's a level of unconscious bias. Unintentional bias is something that affects all sections of society. And I think it's incredibly important that we acknowledge that and try and consciously address that issue. As with anything, I think if you want improvement, it's important to have a benchmark to start off with and then measure it so you can actually see how you're performing against your goals. So Athena Swan, I think, ticks off on all those things and it's something that we're really excited to be part of. Athena Swan is about raising institutional awareness of gender equity as one part of a diversity conversation. It's about questioning the historic methods and practices by which staff are recruited. And it's about looking at the biases real or unconscious that occur around things like promotion, about salary grading, and about the opportunities that arise to accommodate natural career breaks. The Sage Athena Swan and gaining accreditation is a really great way to show publicly that we, we don't just give voice to these principles, that we actually live them as part of the functionality of our community.